Have you seen this amazing animation? It's called a marquee and it's very easy to create. So I went out on a journey to try to recreate it using CSS only. So no JavaScript involved. And I must say, I'm very pleased with the result. Now I'm going to teach you how you can use the CSS to create the marquee effects yourself. But first I want you to understand how you can use the marquee effect and what the do's and don'ts are. A marquee effect needs to pull the attention of the user. So it needs to highlight important information. For example, what companies you have worked with in the past, but it can also be used to announce certain important things like upcoming events or some breaking news. It also adds a visual appeal because it creates motion on the website. The motion can make the page feel less static. It also breaks up long content pages, which gives a breath of fresh air to surprise users with an unexpected scrolling element. But be aware, don't use too many murky effects. Use them selectively and keep the design clean. Although with marquee animations you can fit in a large amount of text, people need to be able to read the text. So avoid overwhelming users with too much text in the marquee effect. Use concise and relevant content. Also stay away from very complex animations. It needs to be smooth, slow and straightforward. Make sure the marquee animation is not obstructing crucial elements. For instance, your navigation or a call to action button. A best practice is to give the user the opportunity to pause the marquee effect so they can read a piece of text or do a action. So these are the basics do's and don'ts and need to knows of marquees. So next up, let's create a marquee effect in WordPress. So let's get to it. We're going to create this marquee effect you can see here with the logo scrolling by with the diagonal subscribe to add taggies reviews and even in the bento boxes you will see that there's one reversed and when you hover them they will pause so let's start off with creating an environment you can find a link in the description to create an environment when you hit it you will go to tastewp.com and when you hit setup it will create an environment for you where you can test things out without even destroying your own website next up is downloading the quick starter that i've prepared for you if you would like to support me you can fill in any price you want if you don't would like to support me you can just hit zero and hit i want this then on the next page you will see the checkout page you will need to enter an email address if it isn't filled in already and then you can hit get when you hit get you will see this page and you can download the marquee the marquee zip file will have a template a style.css and some logos in there so let's extract them all and open it up as you can see here are logos and there's the style on the template let's open up the template press ctrl a to select everything press ctrl c to copy it to our website then we go to our website in appearance themes i would like to set another theme i like to use the 2024 theme that's solid and then we hit activate now that we have installed the themes we also need to install the uh, a plugin to support svg so we're going to add a new plugin you can deinstall it later we install the svg support and install now and then hit activate so now the svg support is added let's go to appearance and then editor and then click on the preview on the right side to open up the editor just hit get started then we open up the options on the right hand side you will see three dots click on it and then go to code editor in code editor you will see some similar kind of code we saw in the notepad just press ctrl a and then ctrl v to paste everything in go upwards and hit exit code editor and there you have your star template next up is adding the css we go to styles we hit the cross because i don't want to see this anymore and then we hit additional css on the bottom then we go back to our folder and open up the styles press ctrl a ctrl c and press ctrl 3 to have our css in there we hit save and you have now saved everything and everything is in there let's start adding the blocks we need so first off if you would like to see a overview of your page you can click the staircase and you have a list view of everything that's on your page in the first section the hero trust you will see the section trusted by and afterwards i want to add something so we will add after a group but we want it to be a row 
in the row we will be adding our logos so we add image then we press media library and select all our logos drag them in and there we have our logos so now we have to select them one by one and change them so let me do that real quick now we've added all our logos you can see that something weird is happening and this is what overflow hidden fixes so and that's all automatically set on our infinite scroll so this will be renamed by hitting the three dots and then enter rename we will call it slider one hit save and then add before another row and we will call it infinite scroll and if you're typing right then we drag our slider inside infinite scroll then we can add a class of infinite scroll and now we already have our marquee effect so that's how easy it is with when you have the right CSS setup. You can add more padding if you'd like to. You can also add padding on the left and right side. You can also add some margin if you'd like to. So before the marquee infinitely continues, you see that it will end in a certain part. So what you need to do is duplicate the first slider. Sometimes it looks weird in the editor. What helps can is a refresh and then you won't see things getting weird anymore and you have a nice infinite scrolling effect now if we would like to add the faded effect on the edges we can add to the class is dash faded and we'll add a fade what we can also do is make it wider so you can change it up as big as or small as you would like it to be so that's the first effect so let's hit save and let's view the site and as you can see there's our trusted by so let's go to the next one a diagonal banner in here duplicate this one put it inside banner by dragging over banner and in here we can add is rotated and as you can see it's now rotated but there's also still something happening that's outside of the uh, page fix this we have added a clause called hide dash overflow and we'll fix the issue now we would like to have a some kind of background color for the logos so what we can do is go to our infinite scroll select styles and then select a background color and we can pick any be set as a background and now it will look as a banner as you can see right here maybe it's nicer if this one is slowed down so what we can also add when we open up the settings in advanced is dash slower and will slow down the logo animation now with the one thing about the infinite scroller is that it just uses CSS. You can put everything you would like to in here. So for instance, if you would like to add a paragraph, subscribe to add taggies reviews. If you haven't already, please do so. Then we can uh, capitalize. You can do that by going to typography, hitting the three dots and then hit select letter case and then hit the AB uppercase once and now your text will be uppercase and you can duplicate this one as much as you would like to we can select one make it bold to look a little bit different as we did with the logo we need to duplicate the slider as well oh, I see that it isn't in slider so let's put those in the slider and let's hit duplicate again and now it should be fine we can see there's still something going on but what we can do is we just refresh the page and it will fix itself and now we have another infinite scroller now lastly we can add a, a logo with a text in a bento grid so i've used covers to add the to create a bento grid and we can just like this one and paste that in here as well but we don't want a diagonal so we can select it in advanced we just remove the is rotated and we don't want the background color so we can hit clear to remove it and i will also want to like to change what's inside what we can do now is add a group and that group needs to be a stack within the stack i want to add first an image we choose from my library for instance this icon and then add afterwards ipsum then we can change our row. We would like it to be in our slide. Let's change that real quick. Then we can change our row to have a background of green. And we'll be adding 
a border radius. So you can see border radius down here. Uh, I like to select EM so we can make it pill shaped. Let's add a little bit of a padding. And now we have some kind of pill shaped, as you can see. Now, if you don't like to see it like this, you can change up the padding on the left or right side as well by clicking the padding options. And then, for instance, right. I don't want my padding right to be set any value. So we will be removing it by sliding to the left. And then if you duplicate it, you will see your logo is going falling by. by. And perhaps here is, is dash faded. Looks nice. So do we have a fading edge. We can duplicate this one and we'll be adding is reversed to set it to the other way. And then duplicate one again. So we have going one direction, the other direction, and then back to the direction we would like to originally. And then we can add on over paused. And when we add this class, it will pause when you hover the section. As you can see, this one doesn't have the class, so it doesn't pause and hover, but this one does. And we can just duplicate, copy and paste. So now you know what mark is, when you should use it and what you should avoid and how you can create one. And if you're still watching, please hit the subscribe button and keep designing.